assume we just have a um, equal square grid concept in the back of our mind, right? So go from here to here. When I draw this, I'm drawing it. I can even think of it as increasing, right? So what does that even mean? What does that way mean? I'm not just going vertically increasing. I'm not saying up, right? I'm not going just this way. I'm kind of going at an incline this way, which is both. So intuitively when I say, okay, things are increasing this way, you can even think of it as that way, I'm putting a little arrow, increasing. When I draw this, I'm going from left to right. So I'm moving this way and I'm also moving in an upward direction. So if I move from this point to this point, I'm going both horizontally, like I'm not going this way and then this way, but I'm kind of at the same time moving from left to right, left to right, and um, and and bottom to top. So maybe if I was trying to draw this like perfectly straight with the ruler, I might draw it this way. But if I think about the movement, like when I read left to right, I go this way, right? You would think left to right and bottom to top. So that way, that way. So we're going left to right and bottom to top. So you might think increasing and then intuitively you might think decreasing, right? Increasing, decreasing. If you put an arrow, so, with just that concept alone, you can use whatever visual you need. So, the number five is the ratio, and if that word scares you, don't worry about it. It tells you how much we are moving up relative and versus how much we're moving horizontally, up or down, vertically versus horizontally, and we divide those numbers. So, in this case, I moved from here to here. I moved up this much from here to there. I moved this much up and exactly this much to the right to get from here to here. Simultaneously, when I moved up that way, I made a vertical motion of that much and an horizontal motion of that much. Okay. So that ratio, if I moved up, let's say, in this case, let's say three units uh, up and two units right, then when I divide them, it's three divided by two, which is one and a half, right? But that number, so the number five means I moved up a, a let's say if I moved to the right one unit, I moved up five units. So the vertical five is the five vertical versus the one horizontal. That could also be ten divided by two. Ten vertical, two horizontal. Ten divided by two is also five. That's the ratio. That's what a ratio is. You just divide the distances. Okay, so the main thing about five is we care about what the sign is. It's positive five. It's not negative five. It's positive five, meaning we're increasing. We are, um, if we go positive x, we go, or horizontal, we go positive y, positive five to one. So we're going up, so it's vertical, um, or positive vertical and positive horizontal, so it's a positive slope. And five is, you know, relative to, let's say, one, five is larger, so we're going up steeper, a number of, like, a slope of 20 is much steeper than a slope of 0.2, okay? So, now, however you want to think about this, don't overthink about, it. don't overthink it, you know, at first when you're understanding slope, I think there's so many terms like rise over run, the delta y over delta x, don't stress yourself out, if that is just too much right now, it's okay, this is increasing. You can use music if you want a crescendo 
go up versus down. Uh, if you are into investing up, you hope your stocks don't go that way, whatever, that kind of thing. So up, down, right? Don't overthink what the X's and the Y's are doing, but just conceptually you're going from left to right and from bottom up. So this is downwards because if I connected these two dots here, um, if I'm still going from left to right, so this is still moving left to right, but my Y, my vertical, is going down. So a downwards versus a positive, that's going to be positive divided by negative, or negative divided by positive, which is a negative number. So negative slope, positive slope. So now let's go into the math a little bit more than that, but not too much, okay? So we still have these two dots. Our dots are points. Points have coordinates, and the numbers are just there to locate the position of those two dots that we're connecting the dots. So we put, let's say, doesn't matter where, X and Y, we want a scale of some sort. Do, 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 do. One, two, three, one, two, three. Doesn't matter. We find the location of those dots. If you need to review that, take some time, let me know. We're going to build on that, but we've talked about plotting points on the coordinate plane. So this is going to have an X and a Y coordinate. It looks roughly, very roughly, like 2, 3 here. But you have X, Y. This, part, this point also has an X, Y, but just to differentiate the two, they're different numbers. So comma b c comma d okay those are numbers so two comma three and maybe just estimating about uh eight comma eight comma eight i don't know eight comma eight two comma three so that is just to find the position of the two dots that we connected okay so now these are points now to know how much we moved in the vertical. Remember, slope is a ratio of the vertical movement, or just taking the vertical movement divided by the horizontal movement to get a number. In order to find the vertical, when we have x comma y like this, the second one is always our vertical point, right? In order to plot c comma d, this means I move to the right c and up d, which means is the vertical movement vertical to get to this to get to this i go right a unit so two and then up three so how far did i go from this to this vertically it's going to be d minus b i went d minus b vertically and horizontally i went from a to c so it'd be c minus a C minus A. Now again, if you've seen x1, y1, x2, y2, and then you did y2 minus y1 and x2 minus x1, great, excellent. Now we're just trying to focus on the big picture, so I will jump straight into that other formula in our practice video, but for now, I don't want to get bogged down in the numbers. I want to start getting used to this pattern, 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 pattern. So, this minus this, and then this is the C minus A, so I divide. That is the ratio. So, like, let's say it's 5 to 1, so we just got 5. That's what our 5 means. It means that if the dist, the difference of D minus B is, let's say, let's say it's um, 10. C minus A is 2. This is not to scale, but 2. So, if we had 10 over 2, that is 5. If we have 15 over 3, that is 5. If we had 20 over 4, that is 5. So any of these division things that give me a 5, that is a ratio, okay? So another way to kind of look at that is if we set C minus A, the distance between these horizontally to be one unit, because if it's already one on the bottom, then the, the change in the vertical is literally, you know, 5 over 1 is 5, 
So if we set this as one, the change in the vertical part is my slope. So um, however you want to do it, this is if we don't, if we just have two random points and we don't know the horizontal distance and the vertical distance, if we don't know what that is, we just calculate it using this formula. But conceptually, we can think about a straight line having a constant slope all throughout, right? So the steepness of the line itself, and lines can go extend to infinity in both directions, that is a constant number. The steepness itself is constant. So if I moved from A to A plus 1, so that that's a distance of 1, that vertical that new point in that vertical distance tells me the ratio. So, do, 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 do. this is just if I climb up one, one, or one, and then whatever that slope is, one, whatever that slope is, one, slope, 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 because this line, these two, that line, that little line extended is also the same as this line. So, it doesn't matter. Two, two dots, two define a straight line, you literally just draw the line between them. So these are all going to be collinear, meaning if I did this practice, this change in y divided by the change in x between any of those points, they, gave me, they give me the same ratio, the same number. So it's all relative y relative to x. Now we're talking about change in y over the change in x, and that's where you might see this delta y, delta x stuff, or rise over run, whatever. Find the concept that makes the most sense to you, but when we talk about that, think about it as like um, one, kind of like one movement that's broken down into two. Some people like to think of it as from here to here, I've moved this much horizontally and then this much vertically. If that helps, then you can try that that visualization. I moved horizontally, C minus A, I moved vertically, D minus B, and I take that ratio. That's fine. If you have no idea what this step stuff is about, just stick with the intuition <laughs> that you have. So, uh, main thing is if you do use this formula or the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, just make sure that you keep the same order. So let's say you don't have this sketch, you don't know if d is above b or if it's this way or you know how steep it is. Let's say you don't have a picture and you don't feel like drawing it, you just pick arbitrarily, just do d minus b. If you do d minus b, make sure you keep the coordinates uh, in the same order. So if you did this one first, and then this one, then for the x part, do this part, and then this part. Because if you swap one or the other, you're going to get the negative slope. So um, that's the main idea there. I hope that that makes sense. Uh, I'm purposely trying to not go too, too much into the math. So, here's a nice visual that I think might help kind of um, clarify what slope is about too and just kind of um, exercise our flexibility with that concept. So, using that idea of the change in the vertical versus the horizontal direction, let's start with the slope of zero. This is a slope of zero. It's perfectly flat. Why is that? Because if I go, if I think about moving from left to right one unit, or yeah, left to right, if I move one unit, so that's my change in the x being one, how far did my y move? Nowhere. Zero. Zero over one is zero. So this is a slope of uh, zero, right? It's flat. No slope at all. Flat. If I then move upwards a little bit, but nearly flat, I expect to see something like point 0.1. Let's try point 0.1. That means if I move from here to here, one unit, of course it's all relative to a scale, but one unit, 
if my Y only moved 0.1. That's only like that much. I don't even know if you can see it. But if I draw the line from here to here, it's not even supposed to be that much. Almost horizontal, but not quite. So, of course, this is not to scale, but this is going to be a slope of positive 0 0.1. 0 0.1, right? Positive. It's still increasing, but it's not very steep, right? Now, if it's one to one, if I move to the right one and up the same amount, one, that is going to be one divided by one is one. This is bringing in a little bit of, um, of trigonometry, actually. This is our 45 degree angle, but that's going to be a slope of positive 1. If I move horizontally 1 unit and up exactly 1 unit, 1 divided by 1 is 1. I can keep increasing, so 2 would be steeper. That's probably not even 2. You'd have to pick 2 points, but... are all increasing slope steeper and steeper okay then we have a vertical now here's an interesting one the vertical line is going to have infinite slope you can kind of think of it that way infinity is not a number but you can kind of picture this little asymptote well first of all a vertical line is not a function it's vertical it literally doesn't pass the vertical line test but um there's no slope there because why is that? Because we're talking about the change in the vertical divided by the change in the horizontal. There is no horizontal. If you're going in a vertical up and down line, you're not going horizontally anywhere. So you're dividing by zero, which breaks math, you know, but there is no slope, but it's infinitely large. You can think of it that way, right? You're not going anywhere here. So there's kind of like a whatever, but that's a very important line because that's also where if we continue moving around the circle, it's also where it switches from positive to negative. So this is going to be a really large number. Let's just say like a um, hundred. <laughs> you can keep doing it infinitely thinly. Of course, I'm doing it on a whiteboard, but you can keep going nearly vertical. Then you hit about this infinity thing or just up, keep approaching it, of course, infinitely thin. But then you suddenly swap and you have a negative. You're very, very steep downwards now, right? If you're going from left to right, this is very steep. So this would be negative 100. You keep going, flattening it out, flattening it out. So this would be negative 1, a slope of negative 1. That's the 45 degree angle from left to right. You're going downwards, left to right left or right, this, this, until, and then this will be like negative 0.5, right? That's what negative 0.5 really means. Then you're almost hitting to zero again. There you go. And then you went a full circle. And then, um, and then you're flat and then you have like negative point, point zero, 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 one. Of course, if you keep making them super thin, you can make it like negative point zero, 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 one. And then zero, and then you're back to positive with this small slope. I think this would actually make a cool um, drawing, so I might do that. Uh, make some cool pencil sounds and do like a really pretty different slope thing, but that's the idea. Zero, and then increasing, 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 negative, very negative, less, 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 and then you go full circle there. Now, um, this of course is all centered about a random axis that I made,
So if this is 6 and this is 2, my ratio is 6 divided by 2 is 3. But a lot of times I find that people either understand that or are like, wait, how do I calculate that vertical part? That seems kind of uh, random that I'm doing, like, you know, D minus B. If that doesn't help, then try and think of moving from here to here as the two motions simultaneously. How much am I going bottom up and then how much am I moving left to right? Okay, anyways, I hope that that was a uh, pun. It was fun for me. It's really ridiculously messy right now, but um, maybe I'll draw this out with nice colors. Um, but we will definitely use our formulas next time and have some fun doing some calculations with that as well. If you are learning this and you have any other, you know, questions, 